From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there, and welcome to another edition of Chicago Newsroom right here on Can TV. I am Ken Davis. Um, you know, in political terms, there are these moments that sort of bifurcate everything that went before it and everything that came after it. And we had one of those moments, believe it or not, it wasn't even a week ago as we're taping this, it was about seven days ago over at UIC Pavilion, where it seemed like the, con the, the, um, the, the political campaigns for president there was everything that happened before UIC and everything that happened afterward. And I just happened to be uh, watching MSNBC and I see Marianne Ahern standing there and saying, you know, there's an interesting wrinkle in this. The Chicago Police Department is telling me that they didn't cancel this rally and neither did the UIC police. But somehow or other, Donald Trump is all over doing these, you know, he's, he's on the line with Fox News on the phone and saying, oh no, I consulted for half an hour with the police department and we came up with, well, you get the idea. Marianne, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ken, <laughs> nice to see you. It's great to have you here. I don't know if you share that view, but I really do think that if I can predict anything, five years from now when we look back on this weird election, that night at UIC is gonna be one of those just kind of watershed moments, something changed. Absolutely, walked into that pavilion and said to myself, well, we are going to have quite an evening here tonight. Not usually do you attend a political rally and all the opposition comes to. You know, it's usually your friends are right. gathered together. Right. Right. And why he picked UIC Pavilion is beyond me. Arrogance, ingura, ignorance, yeah. uh, a little of both perhaps. Well, I see Sneed today saying that he did it to save $50,000 because it was cheaper than going out to Allstate where he would have been safe in the suburbs. But. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and there was, you know, there were those ready to rumble, but there were also those just there for civil disobedience. Yeah. Lots yeah. of students, yeah. professors, yeah. you know, folks tied to the university had been meeting all week. You could tell mm -hmm. they all sat in one section together. Right, right. Um, but he, he he couldn't have come out on the stage. It's weird because, you know, the Donald owns Twitter. He's all over it. But he doesn't seem to understand social media enough that he was able to just read all these posts that have been going on for a week. I mean, this organization was going on on Facebook and Twitter. Everybody knew these people were going to be there. My colleague Phil Rogers did a story this week that said the UIC p police now are claiming we didn't have enough backup. We they yeah, were in charge of yeah, the inside. Yeah, yeah. Chicago police on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, there was the Monterey event staff guys in red polos who were just kind of hi, how are you? Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, by about 5:15, I started texting my boss saying, "I need another camera in here. Yeah, this is yeah. not going to go well." Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's just, it's fascinating on so many levels because I, I, I got to tell you, it was just kind of weird to be sitting there and I was just watching this on TVs all over the place and thinking in some really strange way, I'm just kind of proud of Chicago. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm happy that this is happening in Chicago. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but. And, you know, the, the only part, part of me too was, oh my gosh, to witness this. Yeah. The fist fights, you know, not so yeah, proud of seeing yeah. that. No, of course but not. But for folks to speak up and mm -hmm. say, wait a second, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah. And it, so many insults have been said for so long right, and folks right. have wondered who is buying right. all of this and of course a lot of us were saying well maybe this is going to be the moment when the the uh, Trump phenomenon is going to get slightly derailed and we're going to see his numbers come down from here and this is going to be it in a couple of weeks he's just going to be a footnote to history well how wrong that was it it actually fueled the flames it, it, it actually made him stronger it did however I do think at the same time it did embolden the Bernie Sanders supporters. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 10 days ago, we wouldn't have thought that Illinois would have been in play. Yeah. And yeah. after what happened Friday night, as well as the national polls released over the weekend that showed that it was this neck and neck race, mm -hmm. um, while still Hillary Clinton held on, it was yeah. way yeah. tighter than what they had yeah. thought it was. Good. I do think that it, it, it needs to be said that the real story, perhaps not in Florida, but certainly in all the other four states on Tuesday night, the real story wasn't that Clinton won or that Sanders lost, but that Sanders overcame, you know, 20, 30 point deficits to come to within striking distance in every one of these states. That's a huge story. Unbelievable. Yeah. And if he had perhaps just a bit more time, you mm -hmm. know what helped Hillary Clinton early vote? 
Yeah. Early voters yeah, still went for her. Yeah. And as it got closer, his surge came so mm -hmm. late yeah, yeah. that folks finally over the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, went, well, maybe he's got a chance. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? It's yeah. not a waste of vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he had had perhaps another week, yeah. it might have been a yeah. different story. Not, not unlike what we saw in Florida where uh, you know some of the analysts say that a lot of the people in Florida are kind of the low information voters there. They're just sort of like, we know what we're doing. We're not interested in seeing all your fancy stuff about other facts. We're voting for Hillary and that's what we're doing. And some of that was true there. But I was looking at some interesting, Chicago Magazine did some amazing, right. I, I'm sure you've seen these maps. But one of the things that I found really interesting was that in my little precinct up in Portage Park, Bernie Sanders creamed her. It was like it was I was like 150 to 110 or something. I don't know what it was, but it was you know the numbers are small. But I just can't believe it. I can't believe that on what everybody talks about, you know, Chicago being such a liberal city. I think that politically, the area where I live is pretty much a very conservative area, and yet. Bernie Sanders just walked off with it. I think that's a lot of the anti-Hillary. She has such high negatives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's part of the anybody but Hillary vote. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do not like her or want to, you know, we just want to upset the apple cart, whatever it would be. Yeah. But I think that um, that's what's going to be so tough for her going forward is that her negatives are so high yeah. that folks will vote for any, they really would vote for a Donald Trump over her <clears throat> because they don't like her. And I must say that it, it was a piece of, it was just a stroke of political brilliance for whoever made this decision to put Bernie Sanders so strongly in the anti-Rom category. Because some of it is, there's just an inbred uh, dislike of Hillary Clinton, but there's a, there's a parallel growing dislike of, of Bernie's, uh, I'm sorry, of, uh, of Rahm Emanuel. So when Bernie Sanders is standing up there saying, if you vote for Hillary, you're voting for Rahm, you know, again, out in my area, that might mean, that might mean something. And the commercials, Chewy Garcia, yeah, yeah. Uh, the principal, Troy LaRavie, that has spoken yes, out against absolutely. him. I yeah. mean, those were pretty yeah. powerful commercials. Yeah. Bernie Sanders was in town supporting Chewy a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, you know, just hopping right. on the anti-Rom right. bandway. He really right. was with him. And Chewy had been supporting him e early exactly. on. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, there's an, there's an egotism about us, uh, th those of us who cover the news in Chicago, which is to say, look, all this national stuff is interesting, but what about us? Let's talk about <laughs> us. I am fascinated by what I think happened to Governor Bruce Rauner on Tuesday night. I mean, I, I would have to say that if you if you played that kind of weird game of saying who are the winners and losers, you'd have to put R uh, not even Rahm Emanuel, but Rauner at the top of the loser list. Top of the loser list, and yet one of his spokesmen at 7.45 yesterday morning had a call you know, that I haven't spoken to in probably two weeks because they've gone underground yeah. worrying about yeah. all their races. Yeah. Oh, did you see? You know, it wasn't all bad. It wasn't uh, all bad. You know, we have a couple downstate. No one cares. I hate yeah. to, you know, no one in Chicago cares about yeah, downstate. Yeah, yeah. But in the Chicago area, they were defeated badly. Well, I mean, this really was our version of, I guess, like, you know, the Spanish Civil War or something, this massive proxy war that between the two titans. And, and I mean, you have to say that Madigan won the three that he really cared about, right? He, I mean, Rauner was apparently backing this guy who was running against him in his own Jason district. Jason Gonzalez. Gonzalez creamed him. Uh, of course, we have this this thing in Springfield with Sam McCann, who this is the opposite. It's a Republican who went off the reservation, right, and right. Rauner tried to tried to corral him. Right, didn't work. Didn't work. Right. He <laughs> did get he did get the gal that used to be the reporter who was his wife's chief of staff, uh, Sarah Jimenez. He uh -huh. did make sure that she <laughs> got in, who yeah. actually was opposing uh, the Trump person of Illinois that got that lost his job because of the UIC rally. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh that now there's an interesting that's the stuff that I love all the little background stuff. But let's let's talk a little bit about this Ken Duncan and Julia Stratton oh, thing. Julia Stratton. I mean 5 million. That's incredible. 5 million. Yeah. Could have helped on the budget, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Know. I mean, did 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 you see that coming? I I guess I kind of thought that 
Ken Duncan would be like, it's just, you know, there would just be so much of the usual sort of voter inertia. It's like we know the name, we'll just vote for him, but it didn't No, work. I think in the, in the neighborhood that folks had kind of, uh, they knew, they knew that Ken Duncan wasn't uh, playing ball with the, the players. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, while a lot of people appreciated what he did, some said, hey, you yeah, know what? Yeah. Time to speak up to Madigan. Why does right. he have to do everything to right. Madigan? But, you Not know, enough, though, apparently. Exactly. And the commercials killed him. Yeah. You know, when they said he didn't pay his child support yeah, and yeah, that he had yeah, had some previous yeah, incident yeah. with his ex-wife, girlfriend, whoever. That, yeah. that, that was enough. And I guess, you know, they say that uh, um, our president is sort of slithering down into lame duckery, but he's still got enough juice to, to play a big well, role Well, you know, if he needed a win here in Illinois, <laughs> heck, you know, Alexi didn't do something for yeah. him. You know, Pat Quinn, he supported, didn't do much right, for him. Right, so, right. you know, if the right. Juliana Stratton, <laughs> all right, I'll we'll take, take it. take the victories yeah. where we can get them. I guess. But, but I mean, I, I guess the question that remains on the table this morning is, so you've got, it's, it's so simplistic to say that this battle is between you know, is is between uh, Madigan and, and Rauner, but it really kind of is oh, in, in such is. an important way. And it would look to me like you'd have to say that in the in the way that they self-selected to put themselves out there and fight with each other, Madigan won, right? Madigan won. So does this mean it's time for Rauner to blink? I think it is time for him to blink. And what, and he what also that... has to look ahead. Does he really want to be a one-term governor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one year of the standoff, yeah. Here's your time. We, the primary is over. Uh, let's make a deal. Yeah, you I mean, know? the election I mean, is, ir is irrelevant at this point. That now seems to be, you know, are, are they going to get past the egos and get over this and mm -hmm. move on? I know that Round there's no one more entrenched in what he thinks is going to happen on his behalf than Rauner, but, mm -hmm. than we've ever seen before. Yeah. But honestly, is he going to get term limits? Is he going to get the union, you know, yeah. a, a lessening of the union rules? All of that is not going to happen. Yeah, Let's yeah. take, maybe you can get one. Yeah. Maybe you can get one that would be okay. I'm, right. I'm, I'm inching forward. <laughs> he needs a budget. He needs a budget. Uh, I would think. He needs a couple of them, if I recall. <laughs> you know, one, a, a very good source of mine has said to me that when they first sat down, Madigan and Rauner, that Madigan brought a, a three by five card and said, there's the names of all the governors I've worked with. And I've outlasted. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really? I, I got to believe While it. While he was peeling his yeah, apple. You know, yeah, I got to believe it. And, uh, you know, boy, I've never seen two more stubborn. Oh. And oh. in the meantime, Rome is burning. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It, folks need help. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's one thing for us to be sitting here giggling and laughing, but, but there is actually, a, there is just a, a field of tragedy out there of just really horrible things that are happening to people because these guys can't, settle this and of course the political ramifications of it are just immense because there are these huge issues on the table about what should the role of public service unions be in Illinois and that kind of thing and and you know it's just it, it's it it's got to get settled right right you know we saw what has happened in Wisconsin what mm -hmm. seven eight years ago yeah. uh, Indiana even before that right. uh, let, let's let's have it let's have the volcano eruption and get it over mm -hmm. with and mm -hmm. come to some kind of agreement I yeah. think the unions realize there's a give and take mm -hmm. um, I, I know that even my own newsroom I mean after the Obama election of 08 there were lots of changes that were made because of the economy now we're eight years later and the state of Illinois has not accepted that there's to be some changes mm -hmm. in what goes on in the future for pensions and all of that let's let's get that let's get the final cut you know they've been inching 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 let's yeah. get it over with yeah. it's interesting that that so many people we've had on the program here who are in legacy newsrooms have kind of come to that that situation where in their own newsrooms they've had to deal with this and and you know, it's just not newsrooms. It's everybody who works in the auto industry. Absolutely. Everybody who works in every industry. Right. These, these issues are just, they're just hanging over our heads. But it is different in the public service sector because there are contracts that are constitutionally guaranteed. Yes. So it is a little bit different. It is. If the Constitution had said that you didn't have to take a pay cut in your newsroom, <laughs> I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't think that the union, I mean, no one's signing up and going, oh, gee, hurry up, cut my salary right. and cut my benefits. But I don't think that they've all said we're not taking any. They have said, let's yeah. work together. We want yeah. a seat at the table. Yeah. So um, it's easy to say that the other big loser is our beloved Mayor Rahm Emanuel. 
Um, and I'm really kind of curious about where you, where you put him in this, on this, uh, the scale of, of uh, people who were victimized by the election, because he just sat it out. Oh my goodness, he was in a phone booth. I mean, he was in a phone <laughs> Under booth, his like, desk. you know, calling Rom. No thanks, you know, we'll get, we got this one. <laughs> uh, what, Bill Clinton in town three, four times. I mean, how many times could they bring the guy back, right. even on election day? Yeah. So the first time he was in, um, I asked one of his the mayor's staff, you know, where where's mayor? Mayor loves Bill Clinton. Yeah. Where is he? Oh, they met last night. I said, oh, <laughs> included that in my story. I find out later the Clinton. <laughs> folks not happy to hear that yeah, yeah, you know they yeah. basically said yeah stay away yeah stay away right. he we tried got enough to, problems yeah. without having without you hanging you. around our I neck. truly <laughs> believe I, I how can you not say that he did not have an impact on that close election oh Illinois would have gone the way of Ohio we would have been set 1130 at night we still don't know if Hillary Clinton really won in Illinois yeah. yes it was the Chicago vote that got her over the top yeah. 50,000 more votes yeah. than Bernie Sanders it would have been even more than that. But it's shocking that it's only 50,000 votes more than Bernie Sanders. I mean, that is, that's the, as we said earlier, that is the story. And, there, and, and that they got because Bill Clinton worked it mm -hmm. to the very end yeah. of the day, yeah. going yeah. from place yeah. to place, yeah. you know, saying, please. So this is the thing that I, I, I really kind of want to explore with you about Rahm Emanuel. He has, to, he has to put some difficult things through the city council in the next couple of years. He's got, he's got the CTU strike on his hand. He's got, he's got this just massive civil issue of, of people being shot and killed every day. As, as John Cass said, he, no matter what happens, he's still got a really wrenchingly difficult job to do. Is there any perverse way in which this actually helps him be a better mayor? Is oh. it possible that he could just kind of throw things overboard and say, okay, you know what, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I'm going to throw all my my playbook away and let's start from scratch, you and I, Chicago. Could right, he do that? Right. I mean, that's the glass half full. Mm -hmm. let's, let's toast to Ron yeah. that he takes the crisis and he completely changes it and everyone says uh, three years from now, oh, mm -hmm. he was our savior. He's, he heard the but, bell ringing. And, uh, <laughs> I am so sorry to tell you. Uh, let's play this back in three years. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. gosh, everything can change, uh, yeah. you know, on a lot. His, his first order of business is picking a new police superintendent. Right. Three finalists, two out-of-towners, one insider. Uh, there we go. There and, um, you know, no out matter town, who you pick. Out-of-town and the guy from Chicago. Right. No matter who you pick, there's going to be complaints. There's yes. going to be someone who's going to say, oh, huh, huh, you know, and he could toss all three of these out and mm -hmm. say, I want new people. Now he gets a chance to interview personally, meet these three one on one. If he does not pick an African-American police uh, superintendent, I think he's got a problem. I yeah, mean, the, the I, community I, wants. So we've got an insider and an outsider. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's. I mean I love seeing that a woman made the final three, right, right. but I don't think Spokane to Chicago. That's a giant leap. I, I my reaction was the same when I saw it. It's like, well, wait a minute. Are, are these two? Are these? Is this kind of like the Supreme Court thing? Are, are they setting <laughs> these two up as sacrificial so that so that uh, Williams can get the job? An insider who is African American. I mean, is that is that where we're headed with this? Well, and the difficulty for Williams will be way too many people know him in the city. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of pro and con, right, you know, right, where right. the outsider, Cedric Alexander, we all don't know him as right, well. Right. And yet I think the outsider image of someone who is uh, not mm -hmm. beholden to all his buddies inside right. is appealing right. to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Chicago has always had this issue with uh, even down to the level of like um, um, department heads and stuff that uh, when streets and sanitation is in trouble, do you promote the deputy superintendent to, uh, or, or commissioner to put that in? Mm -hmm. Because he knows, in one in one sense, he knows where all the bodies are. He knows who all the people are who don't work. And right. he can, right. but on the other hand, you know, he's the inside guy, and he's it doesn't it doesn't guy. work as well. Right. So you need to bring somebody else in to look at it and say this whole thing is screwed up. 
But this is a very sensitive issue, and he's got to handle this correctly. He's got to, he's, he's got to win on this one. He can't have another McCarthy situation. No, no, he can't. I, I, I'm somewhat surprised that Escalante, the interim superintendent, did not make the final three. Mm -hmm. You've got to give it to him for sort of holding the line, mm -hmm. being a completely different personality than Absolutely. McCarthy. Yeah. Certainly has the support of the rank and file. They, they, they like him. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this, they've decided, the police board has uh, gotten to these three and said these are the best that they've seen. Uh, you know, the, the mayor in this respect does have a bigger worldview, having been a congressman, having been the chief of staff to yeah. the president. So I think that he, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the outsider, Dr. Alexander, would be the front runner. You think so? I and do. He's, he's from where again? He's from. He's had a couple of jobs. Started out as a Miami police officer. Mm -hmm. um, currently, he's in the suburbs of Atlanta. Which oh, that's right, Atlanta. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, PhD um, has a clinical psychologist. Uh, done family counseling or you know something like that's kind of his expertise. Goes around the country speaking. But here's the real key for him. Very close with Charles Ramsey. And oh, Charles okay. Ramsey is right. now being, you know, being paid yeah. quite handsomely yes. yeah. to be the advisor right. to CPD. Mm -hmm. And if you've got Charles Ramsey saying, this Here's is my, my guy. guy. Now, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps um, yeah. the deputy yeah. superintendent Williams is also close with Ramsey. Mm -hmm. But as an outsider with a Ramsey link, mm -hmm. that, that says a lot. Interesting. That will be fascinating to watch. I, I've said numerous times here on the show that the clock is running out on this, but there is this little window for Rahm Emanuel to sort of reboot and to, and to um, say, look, you know, everything I, everything I thought was wrong. I, yeah, I, he did I, that. Yeah, but... How many times can he put the fuzzy sweater on? You know, I, I, guess, I, I guess I'm not talking about the, the beyond the fuzzy sweater moment, but, but, the, but the thing is that it really does not appear I'm not seeing evidence that he is either capable of or willing to really make like radical changes. And he, I, when, when you are your own counsel, yeah, that is a problem. Yeah, you know, when you think you're the smartest person in the room, right? And you know, at the time, Chewy Garcia, perhaps you know, uh, there were people that had a lot of reservations. But it is so interesting to me that a year later, Chewy has uh. grown, has emerged <laughs> as this rock star. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be uh, supported and be endorsed. Mike Madigan wanted Chewy Garcia's endorsement. Yeah. That just said it yeah. all. And, and all these other candidates. And he spoke at the Sanders rally the night before the election. You would have thought that I, that oh my goodness that they had brought in you know Cesar Chavez. <laughs> Chewy Garcia, you know, yeah, I mean, he, yeah. and he yeah. has grown with this in the past year. Yeah. You know, a year ago when they, everyone was hammering him about, what's your plan, what's your plan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me, what's Rom's plan? Yeah. Okay, can yeah. we hear what right. Rom's plan right. is? Because I haven't seen the Rom plan either. Well, if I were, if I were sitting, if, sitting down with Rom Emanuel today and advising him, I would say, here's what you do. You just, you just go on live TV and you say, I am announcing now that I will not run for re-election. And that gives me three years to upset the apple cart. And by God, you aren't going to recognize this place when I'm finished with it. And then I'll turn it over to somebody else, and, they'll, and the big problems will have been solved. But, but I, you know, that <laughs> lame duck, that, I, I agree. I'd love to hear. I mean, I, I think in, in terms of that would be so exciting to cover. Right. But as the, a lame duck, who yeah. lines up with him? Right. You know? Even and the city council. Even yeah. the city council. The city would, council would, would be yeah. like, okay, we, you know, we don't have to speak up for you well, anymore. Well, I mean, we're seeing that, aren't we? I mean, we're seeing actual, like, real uh, groups within the city yeah. council that are really Yeah, the progressives and the real progressives. Right. And, the, <laughs> and the ultra progressives <laughs> yeah. and the progressive progressives. Yeah. Um, and, and just while we're on this topic, I, I'm wondering how you feel about the in general the chicago police department i have a sense today that the chicago police department has become kind of a loser in all of this also because when i see uh numbers like i saw for kim fox in the predominantly white wards of chicago kim fox got 11 of 15. isn't that amazing i mean I just, I cannot believe it. I can't believe, I mean, Kim Fox won all 18 black wards. That's not terribly surprising, but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And she won five of the 13 Latino wards when she's up against Alvarez, who's a Latina. Right. So 
I'm wondering the degree to which that is a kind of a referendum on the police department. Oh, very much so. Yes. We, the reporters that I was with on election night, when we saw the numbers come in, we were all kind of like, whoa. Yeah. We yeah. did not yeah. see that coming. And Tony Frankwinkle has been, been interviewed and said she, did, she yeah. thought she'd win, but she didn't yeah. think Kim Fox was going to win back. I think big. Kim Fox has said that too, right? Yeah. 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 They were surprised. Uh, you know, and so the shakeup begins. And I say, oh, man, be careful what you wish for, Kim Fox. Man, mm -hmm. you got a tough job. And See, I know she still has to run in November. The, this was one of my things I had. This was one of my questions. Be careful what you wish for, yeah. Kim Fox. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I wouldn't want to be Kim Fox today. You probably remember, as I do, I covered the uh, Barack Obama victory thing in, in Grant yeah, Park. Yeah. And it was one of the most amazing and electric moments I've ever experienced in Chicago. Michigan Avenue was closed from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking out of Grant Park and walking along Michigan Avenue. It was almost equally populated with black and white. People yeah. were spontaneously singing. There was just a general sense that everything had been changed now. <laughs> and people were saying things like, this means we're going to get jobs. You know, the world is going to be a lot different. I'm afraid that she's kind of in that, today is that day for her. Right. And she has to somehow or other tell people, look, I'm hoping to make some changes here. I'm hoping to make things a lot better. But I'm not the Messiah. I can't, I can't just wave my magic wand. Right, right. Let's hope that she has some excellent staff because I think even within the state's attorney's office, there is concern. Right. There's a, 900 attorneys. They've mm -hmm. been there a long time. Right. They look at her resume and say, ooh, it's a little thin. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be able to do this? Mm -hmm. And yet she has very, you know, her, her compelling story is her personal story is just amazing. It sure is. And, uh, you know, this from Cabrini Green. Oh, of the, of the, yeah. I loved it. Loved yeah. that. That's amazing. She spoke about it. Uh, we yeah. spoke to her yesterday. Her eyes well. I mean, how could you not? Yeah. You know, hear her yeah. mother holding her at two or uh. -huh. There is no greater Chicago Horatio Alger story yes. than that. Yeah. But, whoa, you mm -hmm. know, this is a very tough, serious job. It is. And complex. Uh, they're very complex. And she's going to have to rely on not just Tony Preckwinkle, mm -hmm. but those mm -hmm. who are in that office day to day yeah. to make the right decisions and, and fair decisions. And, you know, wow. Yeah. That, that, ooh, uh. And she's not going to be able to operate her office in opposition to the Chicago Police Department. I mean, there were criticisms, of course, that Alvarez was too close, but she can't get too distant from them either. I and mean, it's a, it's such a fine line that she has is. to walk. It is. I, you know, I thought more people would say, wait a second, it wasn't all Alvarez's fault. Um, mm -hmm. You know, clearly she wasn't the only one making this decision. Right, right, right. It reminds me so much of covering the, pr the priest abuse of 20 years ago mm -hmm. when I covered that. Mm -hmm. And everyone did one of these of, you know, not my fault, you know, from the bishop to the pastor to the, you know, parishioners who all knew too that there, this was going on and no one said yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. And it took forever for people to finally go, wait a minute, we're not going to live with this anymore. Mm -hmm. And of course, Alvarez could have charged him sooner. Yeah. But, you know, there was this order of business of, hey, wait a a minute, we gave it to the feds, we're wait, 400 days was way too long. Yeah, yeah. The other aspect of this, I think, is the, is the movement, the youth movement, mm -hmm. uh, BYP 100, uh, Black Lives Matter. These folks really did have an impact. I, don't th I think we can now say for sure they had an impact on this election. But I also believe that they're maybe a little too full of themselves when they're running around <laughs> yelling two down, one to go, right, you know, all right, that kind of stuff. Right. And somehow or other, and I don't know how this happens, but somehow or other, they have to have a kind of coming to the light of day moment too, realizing that just electing Anita, uh, I'm sorry, electing Kim White, Kim Fox, did not solve their problems. Right, and not all of their folks got to the to the ballot box, exactly. obviously, you right. know, or we right. would have seen a. Right. I thought it was so interesting that it turns out that Kim Fox perhaps had the coat. She, it wasn't Bernie Sanders' coattails, it was Kim Fox's coattails. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you, know? yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. you would have Who thought knew? it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. But they got to get their people to the ballot box, you know, right, and, right. and these kids aren't as, oh, really, Where, where's my polling place? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I got to get there when? You know, they got to get there and vote as well. They got to sign them up and they yeah. got to get there. And that didn't turn out as well. It, it didn't, the, the people heard about Kim Fox for now the last four or five months. Yeah. But as far as the Sanders, 
piece of that. They weren't ready to. I, I to didn't. Go. I, I was actually looking for some data. I didn't see any. But d do you know? Was there an elevation in the under thirty vote? No, in, I don't believe there was. There I wasn't. could be wrong. I've yeah. read so much in the last couple it's, of days. It's just too early. I, We're taping this on I read, Thursday right, morning. I, I, I I've read some that said the, the young millennials just weren't there in the numbers they needed. But nevertheless, there is a there's a real challenge for Kim Fox here because these folks kind of believe that they own her in a way. I mean, they, they put her in office. It's doubtful that they actually did put her in office. There was a much bigger change in the zeitgeist that, that resulted in this. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid that she'll be in office for three weeks and she'll make a, a, a decision that she has to make that's controversial, that doesn't go the way they want, and then it's gonna be, okay, now we've gotta, you know, we gotta organize <laughs> against her. I mean, it's, it, it, there's a little too much right. s simplistic thinking going on. We're, we're in a very, you know, uh, uh, heightened time uh, uh, here in Chicago. The Chicago police, after what has happened in Ferguson and Laquan McDonald, and we've seen the number of shootings have mm -hmm. escalated, the number of homicides. They appear to be saying, you don't like me? You don't want us? You know what? Go at it. Go yeah. go shoot yeah. each other. Yeah. Uh, I, that's way simplistic. People yeah. aren't going to like me saying that. All right, whatever. So now we have Kim Fox who may come in and, and, and quickly show her muscle of all we need is one indictment of another police officer, and mm -hmm. whoa, what are we yeah. going to see then? Yeah, I, I so, totally agree. I mean, the police union is, is <laughs> I, I can't even imagine, you know, reading Second City Cop uh, when, when that happens. I know. It, it, it's, it's going to be explosive, and if at the same time we have a, a mayor who's kind of cut off at the legs and can't really exercise political power, that's always been the backstop as far as long as we've been alive, right? Yeah. When things, you know, when all hell breaks loose, well, the mayor just stomps in and stops it or does whatever. Right. But uh, this mayor may not be able to do that. Right. And we know that it really, you know, no matter what department, whether it's uh, CPD, whether it's the fire, whether it's whatever, they all have to check in on the fifth floor before they issue one little statement. Yeah. yeah. And will they continue to do, you know, will right. some of them right. go and so say, you know what? Yeah. We got this, Rom. Right, we, right. we don't need you. The mayor's press office has been running the city of Chicago for the last five years or so, and mm -hmm. and and yes, there's there's some real. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of fascinated by by. I think this election has really kind of reset the clock in, in so many different ways. They often say, even though Chuy Garcia lost last year, mm -hmm. that it takes a couple of cycles. Mm -hmm. And so he did not win, right. but the movement started. It and then it ignited that. with yeah. Laquan McDonald's, yeah. Yeah. you know, the debacle over yeah. that case. I, I, and and I, I, I know we're really pressed for time here, but I, I just want to cycle back to this one more time with the police. I don't pretend that I have my ear to the ground and I know what the community's thinking, any community's thinking, but just among the people that I know and the conversations that I've been having, there have been a number of these conversations that begin with this thing about, you know how you always have to say, well, of course, now we all know that 98% of the police are great and they do their jobs. There's people saying, well, you know, maybe it isn't 98%. Maybe it's only 78% or, you know, 68%. So, Ken, I have to, in full disclosure, i got to tell you, which I should have told you, I have a son who, guess what, is a new Chicago police officer. Oh, congratulations. I didn't know that. I know. Yeah. He, and so, and he would just, he, no more does he want this broadcast. But for me to comment, mm -hmm. it would only be fair because people know. Right. So, if I, you know, uh, it, 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 he's brand new, mm -hmm. he has barely touched oh, his feet out on the, on the and street. may I say, thank God there are people willing to and do I'm that so awfully proud of him. difficult job. I think it's very honorable. Mm -hmm. And, but... It puts me in a tough, you know, here yeah. it's been an interesting time. He just right. finished at the academy and wow. all of this wow. has erupted. And in newsroom meetings at times I've been, can I not do that story, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could someone else? Yeah. Yeah. And yet, you know, it, it's the city and it's how it's operating. And so um, I just don't want anyone to, to misconceive or say, oh, yeah, of course you're saying that. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? There's good and bad reporters. There's mm -hmm. good and bad everything. Yep. I think, you know, the the core, the folks who who decided to sign up and take the oath and wear the star, mm -hmm. they want to make a difference. Right. Some of them have gone on the wrong path 
and we're hitting the reset button, and perhaps that's the best of all, yeah. that we're going to see a change. Mm -hmm. I brought this up not to say that I think that necessarily we've been wrong all this time and most of the cops are bad. I'm saying that I think that things have gotten so bad that the, that the core people who believe in the police department are starting to say, I don't know, maybe, the, maybe there are deeper problems with the department than we thought. And they've done such for this next exam of recruiting, trying to make sure that the officers look like the community. Yeah, yeah. And I think they've, that is very, very important. It is. It is really critical. And, and to that, you know, for that, we have to congratulate the mayor. That's, uh, yes. that, that was a good Very smart. We're going to see what happens with that's, that. That's another thing that, that I find so annoying about doing this job is that so often, there have been things that Rahm Emanuel has done that have been really good for the city of Chicago, and we just don't get a chance to say those things very often because of all of the craziness that's going on. Right, too. right. I do think so. he has a good worldview. Yeah. He now yeah. needs to bring it back right. and, if, and if tap we, into right. that he's not the only guy that knows everything. We had Bruce Dumont on the show last week, and I said, my conclusion has been that he is one of the great political operatives of all times, but he might not be such a hot politician. Yeah, I think you're right. But, you know, he, he hasn't had he hasn't had experience as a politician. Right, so right. He's, he's told politicians what to do all his life instead. Well, we, we really have to kind of wrap this up, but I, I wonder if maybe we could just just could I hit you up about the uh, April 1 strike you think it's oh, gonna happen yeah I do I do I think they've already you know you can't back off now yeah. I mean well it's if, not if, a strike it's a it's uh, a one day the, yeah, yeah walk off the job they, and they're going to have to I mean unless I, I mean maybe at the last minute there is some yeah. you know okay yeah. we've met we figured right. this out hold off here but once you say you're walking out and if you don't do yeah. it yeah. what what position yeah. does that Although I don't think they've got the public sentiment on their side as much as they did. You, this, that was what I was going to ask you. You yeah. don't think so? No, I don't. I don't. I you think, think it's shifting a little? It has shifted. I mean, it, you know what? There's always folks that will support no matter what the yeah. teachers as they oh, should. Sure. As a former teacher many, many years ago. Yes, that's another point, <laughs> right, right? Were you in CPS? No. No, you, you, were, you were here, at, that's right. No, I was here. Oh. I taught at Gordon Tech High School. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, Gordon, when it was 3,600 yeah. boys and I was 22 yes. years old. Yeah. And yeah, then I taught no. at New Trier. Oh, so, wow. and get this, Nutria had a strike. It's one and only strike. <laughs> and well, I it wasn't was because of you. you didn't, <laughs> I was there. You it was very interesting. Oh, no, yeah. thank you. Uh, but, you know, this, this, is, this is what's so fascinating about this is that the, um, the, the union and, and I think CPS under Forrest Claypool uh, have become very savvy about each other, I think. And, and, and I'm just fascinated to watch how they they pull these things in public I mean I, I could go on about this for hours but you know the the day after the negotiations fell apart Forrest Claypool announced that he was going to cut you know 50 million dollars or whatever right, it was right. and I'm going to take away all your pension pickups and yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 and of course it didn't happen yeah and they have learned how to play this theater with each other in a way that um, we, I don't think we've seen before. So I am so fascinated about this April 1st thing because I think there's more to it. I think that they both know that there's something going to happen right around that time. And that's why CPS is like putting its flag in the ground first. Maybe we're going to see something happen that maybe it's a settlement of some kind. I don't know. Well, and I do think even within the union, there is obviously conflict. I mean, if they were able to first say, oh, mm -hmm. I think we got a deal. Yeah. And then they didn't have a deal, you mm -hmm. know, because when the House of Delegates took a look yeah. at what they thought was the deal, right. they said, no way right. we're not signing right. that. Right. And so there is conflict in turn, and, and so the city knows that. I mean, it's no secret I've, yep. if I've figured it yeah. out. And so they're playing that up as well right. because they know that if there's a conflict within the union mm -hmm. and the public sentiment isn't all with them right now, yeah. uh, the city sees yeah. perhaps they've got some wiggle room. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we could just finish by saying Donald Trump got 47 percent of 40.7 percent of cook county oh my goodness <laughs> that that's i'm amazed by that wow i mean look how well he did in the suburbs nobody nobody expected that so what are you gonna do uh the bandwagon is, a, is alive and well i didn't i printed all i wasted all this printer ink and i didn't and i haven't shown this this is again apropos of something we were talking about a long time before these are the wards in chicago that are predominantly african-american 
These are the wards that voted for, um, for Hillary Clinton. Wow. Look at that. And wow. then if you, if you superimpose it on Hillary Clinton versus Bernie, yeah. Bernie yeah. Sanders won in virtually all of the white and Hispanic wards, and Hillary Clinton won in the black wards, with the sole exception of this little piece of the lakefront. I mean, it's like, it's just another one of those, those two now, Chicago things. Now, will those things. Bernie folks go to her is, I think, uh, you know, I, I, who knows? Yeah. I think they could maybe think about voting Republican because there is this antitrust going right. on with, with Hillary. But boy, there is where the machines work. You know, they, yeah. they worked those folks. Isn't that the truth? And you know, there's that, that whole thing about the political spectrum that sometimes you can get so far right and so far left that you meet at the top, you yeah. know? And it could be that uh, the Bernie Sanders people like Trump better than they like Clinton, who knows? Right, you know, and the, the Clinton Democrat, Bill Clinton, I wonder how well he would do. You know, his mm -hmm. positions of, yeah. of 15, 20 years ago yeah. today are not where the Democratic Party right, necessarily right, right. is. You think Barack Obama could win a third term? Yes, I do. <laughs> so do I, yeah. hands down, yeah. hands down. Yeah. All right, well, we have to break this off because you gotta go over to the City Club. So by the time you see this, Marianne will have already spoken at the City Maybe Club. Maybe I can take your maps with me. Yeah, you're gonna, here, they're all yours. You're gonna say anything really important there that we I need to I think I've already said it here, oh, okay. so. Right. Okay. <laughs> Marianne Ahern from Channel 5, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure having you here today. Thank well, you very I much, I hope you Ken. come back some other time. I know how busy you are, though. You have been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a, a service of Can TV because it is all about you, my friends, and you can watch YouTube. You can just, or you can go to this address right here and see this full show or any of our other shows in the archive. As we always say, spend a weekend and look back over the last 300 shows of Chicago <laughs> Newsroom. I wouldn't do it. I don't recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another show. And um, well, that's it. That's it. Thanks very much. Bye.